James Chadwick was born on the 20th October 1891 in Ballington, a small town in Cheshire, England. He liked fishing and playing in the garden. He was the son of John Joseph Chadwick and Anne Mary Knowles, but lived a great part of his childhood by his grandmother because his father had left to open a laundry business in Manchester. In 1902 he went to the local Ballington Cross C of E primary school and attended Manchester school where he specialized in applied mathematics. He gained two scholarships to attend Manchester University and did so in 1908. He was only 17 and still immature and very shy which would have big consequences. He applied for mathematics but was received by mistake as physics student. But being so impressed by the introduction he decided to do physics instead of mathematics. In 1911 he graduated from Honor School of Physics and began working in the physical laboratory in Manchester. He worked on various radioactivity problems gaining his Master of Science degree in 1913 under supervision of Professor and Nobel Laureate Ernst Rutherford who would later be called the father of nuclear physics. That same year he was awarded the 1851 Exhibition Scholarship, a recommendation of Rutherford and moved to Berlin. He worked there in the Physikalische Technische Reichsanstalt, the Reich Physical and Technical Institute under Professor H. Geiger. He quickly learned German and was introduced to leading German physicists as Albert Einstein. But the First World War broke out and he was imprisoned in Ruhleben POW camp together with 5,000 other British as a prisoner of war. The camp had been a horse race course and although he suffered from bitter cold and food, and food insufficiency, he was able to set up a laboratory and proceed his research on molecules in one of the horse stables together with another British physicist, Charles A. Liss. But after four years, H. Geiger, his contractor at the Physikalische Technische Reichsanstalt, who had fled to England in time, interceded for his release in 1990 and James Chadwick could return to England. In the meantime, Sir Rutherford had moved to Cambridge and worked in the Cavendish laboratory where he had, for the first time in history, artificially transformed nuclei. James Chadwick was allowed at the Gunther and Keyes College and joined Rutherford in the Cavendish laboratory, studying alpha particle bombardment and the properties and atomic structure of nuclei, leading to his discovery, the neutron. Everything in the world exists out of objects. We've given these names, such as guitar, table and car. These objects exist out of smaller particles. These particles are so small that you can't even see them with a microscope. We call them molecules. All of the things you see around you are made out of millions and millions of molecules. But even these molecules, again, exist out of smaller particles. We call these atoms. But we can go even a step further. E. Rutherford discovered that these atoms were built of particles as well, protons and electrons. The protons have a positive load and the electrons have a negative load. You can compare it with a magnet. Positive and negative attract each other and this way they stay together. However, with some atoms the weight was much higher than the number of protons and electrons together. There had to be another particle. This particle is the one that James Chadwick had discovered. To split an atom, you have to shoot protons or neutrons at it. Electrons won't work because they have a negative charge. But protons are repulsed and can therefore only be used to split small atoms where the electric barrier is low. But with James Chadwick's discovery, any atom could be split and therefore in 1935 he got the Nobel Prize for Physics. But how did he discover it? In Europe, atomic research was done as well, and for discovering the neutron, he used a way to track the particles that he borrowed from Frederick and Irene Joliot Curie. He repeated their experiments with a different goal, searching for the neutral particle. And success he had! He was able to determine that the neutron was there, and its mass was about 0.1% more than the mass of a proton. Doors opened for many scientists. Because neutrons have no electrical charge, when they are fired they will go through deep layers of almost any kind of material and into the nuclei of the atom it is fired at. Many scientists worldwide began experimenting with all kinds of materials in combination with neutrons. 
they found out that when used with uranium, the neutrons induced nuclear fission, eventually resulting in the making of nuclear weapons and nuclear power plants. In the same year Chadwick had won the Nobel Prize for Physics, he became professor at Liverpool University in 1935. After five years of research on the feasibility of an atomic bomb, the MAUD committee came with a report that included the cost estimates and technical specification for a large uranium enrichment plant. The MAUD committee led the British Atomic Project, and it consists of scientists S. James Chadwick, who later wrote, I realized that a nuclear bomb was not only possible, it was inevitable. I then had to take sleeping pills. That was the only remedy. Shortly after the British and Americans had bound their forces, they proceeded their work together in the Manhattan Project, where James Chadwick led the British scientists in the US. The Manhattan Project developed the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Does this mean that, because Manchester University made a little administration mistake, which caused Chadwick to study physics and discover the neutron, we now have nuclear weapons? The answer, in fact, is quite arguable. German scientists appear to have discovered the neutron at the same time as James Chadwick. They were afraid of publishing it because of the devastating results it could have, which proved to be right, of course. James offered to share his Nobel Prize with them, but they refused. Stop.